Good afternoon, I am Mr. Ish. In this video, I want to evaluate the specific differences between an ellipse and a hyperbola in terms of the equations that come about. We are looking here at a horizontally directed x square over a square plus y square over b square equals 1. The representative equation of a similar characteristic horizontally directed for hyperbola would be x square over a square minus y square over b square equals 1. In both instances, the center is the origin. These are standard equation forms for ellipse and hyperbola. Look at the difference. Plus and minus, that stands out as the most important difference here, positive and a negative. These are horizontally directed. Now look at the vertically directed and then a very good peculiarity will come about. Vertically directed ellipse would be x square over b square plus y square over a square equals 1. Now look over here you will have y square over a square minus x square over b square equals 1. Again, you see the positive and minus difference, the hyperbola and the ellipse. But what stands out in all of these instances? For an ellipse, you must always maintain your x square right here in this top left corner. For the hyperbola, you're always maintaining your a square here in the lower left corner of the equation. If the equation were to represent like a rectangular format, here's your top left, here's your lower left. That's what I'm talking about. For a ellipse, you're maintaining the x square always in this top left part and then everything adjusts accordingly, horizontal and vertical. For a hyperbola, maintain your a square in the lower left corner, everything adjusts around that. You can see the horizontal and you can see the vertical. The ellipses have positive, the hyperbolas have negative. And if you're looking at the focal points, that's a difference right there. For the ellipse, c squared, the focal point is always equal to a square minus b square. And I'll tell you why. For the focal point for the hyperbola, c squared is always equal to a squared plus b squared. What does this tell you? It tells you for here in the ellipse, a is definitely larger than c and a is definitely larger than b. You have to understand that because the vertex of an ellipse is located further away from the center than the focal point and then the minor axis endpoint. Remember that a is larger than c, a is larger than b. For the hyperbola where c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, you know c here is larger than a, c here is larger than b. In this particular conic section, the focal point is located further away from the center than is the vertex. If you're looking at a ellipse right over here, here's your vertex, but here's your focal point, it's located closer to the center. If you're looking at a hyperbola, here's your vertex, here's your center, but the focal point is further away from the center. Clear differences have to be remembered. A is larger than C, A is larger than B, C is larger than A, C is larger than B. Another important difference is with regards to the eccentricity, you know C or A. The eccentricity for ellipse is always a value less than 1, larger than 0. That's just how it is. A fractional value less than 1, larger than 0, but not equal to either. It's in between. Here, for the hyperbola, the eccentricity is always larger than 1. It has to be larger than 1. It cannot be equal to 1. It has to be larger than 1. In both instances, you know the eccentricity is always equal to C or A. For the hyperbola, the C value is larger. As I told you, C is larger than A. Hence, you're having a value larger than 1. For the ellipse, I've told you A is larger than C. Hence, you're having a small number divided by a larger number. You end up with a fractional value over here. In all instances, C cannot be equal to A. It just cannot because then you're no longer looking at an ellipse or a hyperbola. You might have then a characteristic of a circle and or a parabola. But these are the clear differences you need to remember. Keep in mind you have a positive, positive here for the ellipse, horizontal and vertical. You have a minus here for the hyperbola. You will have c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. You'll have this, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. You have the eccentricity which exists as such. In addition over here you'll have asymptotes, you know, y is equal to plus and minus b over ax or y is equal to plus and minus a over bx. You don't have asymptotes for this. You have asymptotes for this because you have a discontinuous curve. You have a continuous curve over here because the ellipse can be traced all the way around. You have a discontinuous curve here because the hyperbola is separated into two separate fragments. And look at the domain. The domains will be starkly different. Here the domains are very much defined. You can say here from a minus a to a, here's your domain. You can say a range minus b to b. You have defined domain and range. Here your domain can very well be minus infinity coming up to right here the vertex minus a. Then I'll jump across, you'll have a up to positive infinity. And you know the range will be minus infinity to positive infinity. Clear differences here with the asymptotes coming. And of course, I'm only showing you part of the aspect. I'm not showing you here with regards to translations where you have H and K coming into the picture. I'm just keeping everything general and simple. 
Here I'm focusing in terms of graphs more on the horizontally directed ellipses and our hyperbolas. But keep these differences. The equation form, the positive and the negative, the focal points, calculations of C value, how they're determined, the eccentricity differences, the domain and range differences, and the relationships which I mentioned earlier. Ellipse A is larger than C, A is larger than B. Hyperbola C is larger than A, C is larger than B. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.